Hi again. And we are talking about uh, yurts, uh, its origin, history, types, designs, performance, and etc. And in this particular video, we will be talking about the e making and tools. And we will start with re reviewing the tools. Now, uh, this is uh, these are the uh, drawings of the Kazakh making tools that I drew from the museum uh, in, in, in my hometown of Almaty because they wouldn't let me photograph it uh, so I had to uh, draw them and uh, paint them color them by hand but this is an accurate representation so uh, these are the names of these tools and uh, I'll give you the Kazakh and Kazakh name and English translation. So the first one is Ngru, which is uh, draw shaver. Uh, it's familiar to uh, all of the traditional uh, woodworkers. Also, it's very similar to the draw shaver used uh, for making uh, bows and, and particularly long bows, English long bows and American flat bow. So all the bow makers would find this very similar, uh, very familiar. The next one is Urnik Zhongge, which is a toothed draw knife, very similar to shaver, but it has this tooth. Uh, it makes these grooves on the belly of the uok, of the of the uh, roof poles. Again, very similar to the tool used to make grooves on the wooden core of the uh, uh, composite recurve bows or, or horse bows, Asiatic uh, horse bows. Uh, the third one, the, the, these are two types of the uh, bending bench uh, for uh, both kerge and uoks for wall section uh, pieces and uh, roof poles and in Kazakh it's called tiz uh, we also have uh, shapa shot which is uh, adzi or adz and it's used for for uh, chopping and, and carving wood pieces we have ara uh, which is a uh, handsaw and keskish is a, a, a carpenter's knife so these are the most common tools uh, used for yurt making i also use this image for my uh, bow making video because uh, my argument was that uh, we don't have much information all on how the bows were made by the nomads by traveling uh, tribes uh, so how would they make uh, such a complex uh, weapon as horse bow so my argument was that if the nomads uh, had very similar tools to uh, uh, say Chinese or, or Turkish uh, bow making tools and they were able to make their own yurts then surely they would be able to make their horse bows but anyways that's a little bit uh, sidetracking going back to yurt making uh, kerge or wall lattice was made in four steps First, uh, the individual wood laths or, or planks were shaped <coughs> to proper dimensions and, and length. And then uh, in the second step, they drilled holes in them in, in uh, equal, equally spaced distances, which were then uh, uh, the uh, laths or planks with holes were connected into lattice using uh, height nails, nails made of height. And this made the 
lattice flexible so it could uh, collapse or fold uh, or be extended and the fourth stage is a finished foldable lattice in the uh, transportation position shown here in transportation position now this is the making of orchs or dome poles or roof poles and it's done in seven stages uh, so again you start with shaping individual wood poles in the second stage you heat bend them uh, you, you I mean you, you heat soften them and what heat does as all the woodworkers workers knows know the heat would soften the, the sap uh, between the wood fibers so and it stays uh, it becomes soft and flexible for a moment until it uh, once it cools down it, it hardens again so you have this very short window of opportunity to bend it and the bending after heating is done in stage three on the test uh, basically uh, you insert it and using an additional piece of wood and your body weight there is a special technique you bend them in a desired shape and in stage four they are put uh, between the pegs these pegs are driven directly into ground so uh, you place the bent wood uh, in between these pegs in such a way that it would prevent them from unbending or twi twisting in, 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 in an undesirable fashion so they they will be cooling down in this uh, predetermined uh, shape by pegs and then in stage five we would sharpen the top end of the uh, wood pole it's important to know that if it's done properly it has to have square profile and the holes the corresponding holes in the shanrock are also square and at a certain angle so you can only insert it in the correct way and it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't play it has to stay like this it's very important for Kazakh E type so uh, in step six uh, the the hockey stick end is drilled and we insert insert a uh, rope special rope handmade rope in it and we tie it and it stays there permanently and finally after painting we end up with uh, a final work that is uh, completely prepared to be used for uh, installation for yurt installation And now making of yesik or wooden door. Uh, first, uh, we make door leaves, and it's fairly straightforward, similar to uh, our our standard wooden uh, wooden door, except for it would have uh, one section that is uh, it's it's three panel door, but instead of the top section instead of the top panel we would insert insert these um, vertical uh, round pieces that form uh, it's kind of like a see-through window in the door again uh, serve as skylight ventilation and also allow to see who's trying to enter a yurt so once the door leaves are assembled uh, we assemble them in a wooden frame and uh, it's very straightforward design uh, it doesn't have hinges instead of them uh, both uh, a header piece and threshold would have these round holes drilled in them and the doors would have uh, these mm, these wooden pegs on top and at the on the bottom 
So you insert them in the corresponding holes in the header and, and, and threshold, and your pieces become hinged without metal hinges. And that's it. Uh, putting it all together, securing it all in places, you end up with a finished portable door frame. And that's your Yesik. Now making Shanra. This is uh, also a fairly complicated, one of the most complicated parts of the yurt because it uh, involves uh, heat bending. So uh, step one, you start with shaping individual uh, wood uh, pieces for Shanrak. You make three of them. This is for the ring. Uh, in the step two, you make these uh, tying uh, laths or planks and also mm, these four pieces that would hold these planks together. And in step three, you uh, make this three part ring. In other words, you're putting these three parts together, securing them in place with glue and, and wood pegs again. So you end up with this round ring. And finally, in step four, you are assembling all parts together in, in the pre drilled holes. And you end up with this neatly looking uh, shanrak with all the pieces in their places. And uh, the, the holes are drilled and cut to square shape to receive the ends, the square ends of the uok, as I mentioned earlier. And once again, uh, we end up with uh, all these pieces, and when we assemble them together, the yesik, the kerege, the uok, and the shanrak, we end up with a fully assembled Kazakh E frame. Now uh, let's move on to felt uh, cover making process. It's a long process, but um, I simplified it to show to just a few steps. Step first, you're whipping the uh, sheep or camel fur. It's done with these uh, long handheld sticks. Uh, usually the entire family, all the young people of both genders would come and sit around this. Uh, they put the fur on the cow skin and uh, all the young people would gather around and just whip it for a for, for long time until it's whipped to a desired condition evenly and then uh, the whipped uh, fur would be laid down in a rectangular shape or, or any desired shape on a straw mat and the straw mat would be rolled in like like you like you roll your your rugs and then it's uh, wrapped around by ropes in a special fashion that allows for it to be rolled back and forth on the ground by two teams of people uh, so uh, they pull and release pull and release uh, in such a fashion that the uh, the rolled uh, straw mat with fur inside rolls back and forth back and forth um, and finally, there are other steps that I didn't include, but uh, basically this is it. And you end up with this um, rectangular, flat, compacted piece of uh, compacted uh, wool. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I kept saying fur, but this is wool. So you end up with this woolen mat, uh, mat of uh, compacted wool and it's compacted in such a way that it becomes very, uh, very sturdy. It's very durable. You can't just you can't just pull it like pull it apart like this, even though uh, it's made of these short, loose pieces, 
by compacting them together they they interlace in so much in so much on on a uh, on this uh, you know very micro level so that they form this very strong fabric almost and this piece uh, is good enough uh, to serve for years it will go for years and years as a yurt cover finally the final step is to sew uh, a rope on a perimeter and leaving uh, uh, loose ends for tying it on top of a yurt so that's your felt making process very simplified and then you end up with your yurt parts that we went over uh, previously your tour look zuk keys yesik and tunduk and all these pieces get assembled uh, on top of the wooden frame and you end up with your complete yurt so that's the uh, very simplified uh, overall uh, review of yurt making and tools of all the processes involved in making the wooden frame and the felt covering and that's it for this section we will talk more uh, about yurts and their use in the following sections so please stay with me and i will see you in the next video thank you